Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Chair Katie Cornell, and I would like to welcome you to the December 1st, 2020 Public Art and Cultural Commission meeting. The Public Art and Cultural Commission, originally called the Public Art Board, was established by the City of Asheville in 2000. This nine-member commission serves as an advisory board to the city on matters concerning art in public spaces. The commission is responsible for promoting public art in the city, overseeing the city's public art projects, and ensuring the art displays in public buildings and public spaces in the city of Asheville are properly maintained. Normally, our meeting would consist of several subcommittee reports on specific public art projects, but since this is our first meeting since February, today's meeting will include a lot of updates from our city staff liaison and public art program manager, Steph monson Dahl. All committee members and staff are participating virtually. We appreciate your patience as we work through committee meetings a bit differently, especially since our first this is our first meeting in a while. We are streaming live on the Virtual Engagement Hub, which is accessible through the Virtual Engagement Hub link on the front page of the city website and also linked on the Public Art and Culture Commission website. We also have an option for the public to listen live by phone by calling 855-925-2801 and entering meeting code 9182. You can send public comments to PACC December 1 meeting at publicinput.com. You can also find this address on the Public Art and Culture Commission website and at the top of the meeting agenda. For those of you out there joining us today, welcome. I'm now gonna go through and introduce all the committee members who are participating virtually. Please make sure to mute your microphone if you're not speaking. And when you have a question or would like to speak, unmute your microphone. Please remember to mute your microphone after you are done speaking. Committee members, as I call your name, please say a quick hello. First up, Vice Chair Valeria Watson. Hi there. Allie McGee. Hello, hello. Andrew Fletcher. Not here yet. Pete Perez. Hello. Joanna Haggerty. Hi there. Constance Richards. Not here yet. Jasmine Washington. Hello. And Marsha Almodovar. Hi. There you go. And I, of course, Katie Cornell, I'm here. So um, to help our audience follow along, I will state each section of the agenda aloud and do a vocal roll call for each vote. Additionally, I will ask the committee members to raise their hands to speak, and I will call upon them. We will now move to the administrative items. Our first administrative item is to welcome our newest member, Marsha. Marsha served on the Public Art and Cultural Commission Celebrating African Americans Through Public Art Subcommittee. This was also called the Visiting Artist Project on the leadership team. She also worked closely with the Asheville Area Arts Council on the execution of the city's Black Lives Matter street mural in Pack Square. Through, the community, through community initiatives like these and her work at Leaf Global Arts and as a member of the Asheville Downtown Association Board, Marsha has proven herself to be a strong public art advocate and we and will be a valuable member of our team. So welcome, Marsha. Our next item is a reminder on member terms and reappointments. We also recently had several term renewals. Um, at the September 22nd City Council meeting, Valeria Watson, Andrew Fletcher, Jasmine Washington, Pete Perez, and I, Katie Cornell, were reappointed by City Council to serve another three years. Andrew and I have served one full term and we will now be serving our second three-year term. Valeria, Jasmine, and Pete have completed unexpired terms and will now be serving their first three-year terms on the Public Art and Cultural Commission. In June, 2021, Constance Richards, Joanna Haggerty, and Allie McGee will all have expiring terms. Um, only Constance will not be eligible for reappointment, having served two full terms. So the next item on our agenda is to approve our minutes from our February 2020 meeting. 
last time that we were able to meet. Did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Are there any edits or discussion on the minutes? Seeing no discussion, do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes as read. <laughs> Perfect. Do I have a second? A second. Pete has seconded. I will now do, um, the motion has been moved and seconded and I will now conduct a roll call vote. Um, committee members, when I say your name, please say aye or nay. Valeria Watson. Aye. Allie McGee. Aye. Andrew Fletcher, is Andrew here yet? Pete Perez. Aye. Joanna Haggerty. Aye. Is Constance here yet? No. Jasmine Washington. Aye. Marsha Almodovar. Aye. And Katie I, Katie Cornell am also an aye. So having um, approved the minutes, we will now move into new business. Um, Public Art Program Manager Steph Monson Dahl will now give us a presentation on the proposed themes for the Rad Tip Call for Artists. Hi, Commission members. Good evening. Thanks for giving me a little time tonight to give you an update and ask you for consideration to vote on the themes for a couple new River Arts District calls for artists. As you know, one of the duties or responsibilities that you have as a commission is to advise city staff on the site and content of different public art projects. And in this case, the funding for the project is coming from the RADTIP, the River Arts District Transportation Improvement Project that is now wrapping up along uh, two miles in Riverside Drive in the River Arts District. So there are several art projects that we're not talking about tonight and several that we've already completed in the area. But what I want to focus on are a project that will loosely called the swings and a project that we're going to call the murals. So hopefully you saw in your staff report, there was a link to a picture of one of what uh, we called porch swings. That's part of the street furniture associated with the rad tip project. They're very large core 10 steel structures that have um, core 10 steel plates uh, connected to them. They're on um, either side of them. When those, when those plates are not on, they look um, very industrial uh, and they look airy and light. And most of the subcommittee that we were working with to look at the themes for public art felt like that those um, structures looked better without those steel plates on. Why that is important is because originally one of the public art projects that we were going to do based on public input a couple of years ago and the Asheville Design Center's coordination of our public art plan for the rad tip was to use um, those uh, panels as a place for people to, to um, create a two-dimensional artwork. So that may have been through um, uh, laser cutting, the actual steel itself, it could be through paint, it could be through a variety of methods. Because the subcommittee uh, took a look at it and, and um, had lengthy discussions about what would work well here, um, uh, we're, um, we are able to provide to you a recommendation that if we use those steel panels at all on the swings, that they be used in a way that they help support the creation of an outside musical art piece and that we potentially do for a call for artists to more, do more of a place making piece where we um, ask other musicians and artists to come up with ideas to leverage the fact that this site is right underneath, uh, it's pretty close to underneath, the I-240 uh, Captain Bowen Bridge and you have a constant rhythmic hum and also a lot of percussive uh, beats going on there um, that are already serving as a backdrop for some kind of sound uh, installation. 
So as you can see, the, the recommendation is to issue a call to create outdoor musical instruments in and around the porch swings location, including an opportunity to use the core 10 panels as a material or to use those locations. And Andrew Fletcher, who's not here, but I wanted to give a shout out to, he actually spurred this idea by talking about using that steel to um, create a, oh, I just forgot, it's like a tongue drum uh, uh, to cut it into that. And um, it spurred a great conversation. So thank you, Andrew, who's not here for that. That's the first recommendation. The second recommendation is regarding um, murals in the district. Uh, for a long time, we've been having a discussion about having murals uh, underneath the bridges at the I-240 Bowen Bridge and also at the West Asheville River Link Bridge. And those sites are pretty well fixed. However, the content was not. After much discussion, the group felt like uh, focusing on the riverfront area ecology for the stanchions of the I-240 Bowen Bridge on the west side of Riverside Drive, the side that's closest to the river, would be the way to go. And then to um, incorporate, if possible, these two projects, but if not, let them stand alone on the east side of Riverside Drive, focus on social justice or perhaps the history of the Hillcrest community because this is actually connected to the walkway to Hillcrest. So a lot of the community goes back and forth in this area and has a rich history uh, to this area as well. So the third location of murals is the West Asheville Riverlink Bridge. And the suggestion there is that they should use both sides of the bridge, one artist or artist team to depict the history of the River Arts District. So any questions on those, which really are in a way, not just two, but kind of four recommendations. Okay. Yes, Allie. Allie. Um, so it, would this be sort of ultimately calls for four different artists or would it be kind of the same artists doing all of these? It's a great question. Um, definitely the porch swings is gonna be a separate call. Definitely the history mural is going to be a separate call. And I think the way that we will structure the call for the I-240 Bowen Bridge is to allow people to apply for both or one, which I, which I don't think we've done before. So um, staff is supportive of the recommendations given by the subcommittee. And um, we're asking you to consider approving that subcommittee recommendation tonight through a motion. We suggested a motion here in your staff report. Um, of course, I'm not trying to, I'm not, uh, you know, if you want to have more discussion, that is fine. I think one of the things we should point out as staff is um, if uh, those of you who actually served on this group, Valeria and Katie, um, Andrew Fletcher, Constance, Andrew and Constance are not here, but um, they both have been involved. If any of you wanted to provide additional information. And I Constance has Constance raised her hand. Yeah, she's here. Go ahead, Constance. Sorry, I'm just saying that I'm here. So having some technical difficulties, I don't even know if you can see me, but I can see everyone. So we'll just keep it that way. I'll just say that the Rad Tip Public Arts Subcommittee is a great group. There's been a lot of thought and discussion that's gone into these recommendations. And I think they're um, good, solid recommendations. Um, I am curious, Steph, how will the calls be done um, what's the process going to be for the calls? So um, we want to get these calls out as soon as possible. Um, one thing I should note, or I'd like to note for you all, is that we are preparing for a grand opening of all the facilities in the Rad Tip that will last for a month from uh, Earth Day, which is April 22nd to May 20th, which is Wilma Dykeman's birthday. So we're currently in the pre-planning or planning stages for those events, which are all going to be COVID safe, kind of self-guided tours and activities that um, happen during that time period. But we would very much like for the murals to be underway during that month. And so 
Um, the process is going to look very similar to the process that you all have participated in before, which um, means that the selection committee for these artists will include at least one member of the PAC. Um, I think it will probably just be the entire River Arts District um, Public Art Committee that we were talking about before. If we can manage that, we'll keep that group, but that's up to Katie and she and you guys. Um, so you'll be part of that selection um, team and we'll probably um, uh, prioritize the murals first. Are there other parts of the process you're interested in, Katie? Yeah, how will the call be posted? Will it be through CAFE or how will that work? So um, we're not using CAFE right now, but as you guys may remember, as part of one of your adopted policies, we do work um, our goal is to work with local arts organizations and regional arts organizations to um, send this out through the network. I can um, I can look at CAFE at re-engaging um, with that, but we did think as we discussed this before that we probably especially, well, for the murals and the music um, and metal work that we feel like we have um, a great stock of artists here in the region um, where we would get enough calls um, from local outreach. However, we we can also monitor that and I can keep you all posted. And if we don't feel like we're getting um, enough interest, we can um, uh, reissue or delay the call and use um, a national outlet like CAFE if need be. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? It's a great question, Katie. No, I think the process that you used for the transit station was, well, uh, at least I, it, I, from the outside looking in, thought that, that it was much better. Um, but what are your thoughts? So are you saying that's going to be direct emails that are going to these different organizations or like a press release going out? Well, always, yeah, we always do a press release as we post it. It goes on um, the city's bid website. And that means that any vendor, including any past public art vendor that has registered with the state of North Carolina is going to get this as an outreach opportunity because um, they've vendored to do work or they've registered to do work with the government. And then we also ask other organizations, definitely the Arts Council, to place it on um, their website. And we do social media. Um, I think, um, not sure, maybe Marcella can tell us if, um, if they did social media for that call just the once or if they did it twice. Um, I think um, the Arts in Transit project is quite a small project. But these are larger projects uh, in total, so we'll need to focus more on Outreach, I mean, those murals are going to be something that um, hundreds of thousands of people will see. So um, I guess what I'm asking is like CAFE, people submit their materials through CAFE. So mm -hmm. how will they be submitting their application documents, I guess is the question. So without CAFE, what the way that we usually have people submit is through electronic submissions. And then we just save them. Um, and have everyone access them through Google Drive. So um, that is, uh, I'll say that the last time we used CAFE, I would say it was moderately successful, all of us accessing it. Is that right, Katie, maybe? Um, uh, some people did like the format and some did not. Um, but it is at least all in one place. But we're hoping that with Google Drive that we could achieve that same thing. Each we give a folder for each artist. We, and we did that last year as well with a uh, viewpoint, which ended up being um, Dwayne Barnes piece. I personally think that's great. Uh, I think it's a lot more user friendly than cafe has been. Um, and I think will be easier for local artists to apply. All right, is there any more discussion about this? Does someone want to make a motion? Um, let's see, you wrote it out for me. Um, someone wanted to make a motion um, to approve the RAD Public Art Committee's recommendations to staff regarding the site and content of the Porch Swings project just northwest of the interstate intersection of Riverside Drive and West 
Haywood Street and the Murals Project under the Captain Bowen Bridge and West Asheville Riverlink Bridge. That is a mouthful. Mm -hmm. I can make our motion to approve the Rad Public Art Committee. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Valeria has seconded. So I will now do a roll call vote. Um, so committee members, when I say your name, please say aye or nay. Valeria Watson. Aye. Allie McGee. Aye. Andrew Fletcher is not here. Pete Perez. Aye. Joanna Haggerty. Aye. <clears throat> Constance Richards. Aye. Jasmine Washington. Aye. Marsha Almodovar. Aye. And I for Katie Cornell. Okay. So we can now move into the updates portion of our agenda. Uh, we will now hear updates on the recent Percent for Arts projects. Just a reminder to those watching, the city of Asheville has an administrative policy requiring 1% of funding from qu qualifying capital improvement projects to go towards public art. So we will hear an update about the Art in Transit project from Marcella Moreno, Transit Project Coordinator, and Austin Hamilton, Assistant Project Manager. Cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Marcella. I'm the Transit Project Coordinator. I'm going to present my screen. All right. Can you all see my presentation? Because I can't see you now. Yes, yes, everyone has to be it. verbal to Marcella for this. Oh, yes. 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 Cool. Awesome. Um, so I'm Marcella, and then Austin is also on the line. Um, so feel free to jump in whenever, Austin, if I leave something behind. Um, but we're really grateful for the 1% to add um, some pizzazz to the art station renovation I guess for some context, um, the art transfer station is downtown um, at 49 Cox Avenue. In the past year, um, we've been undergoing a pretty great renovation project of um, redoing the furniture on the inside, updating the platform, some ADA improvements, and also public art. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So a little bit about our process. We started... Um, back in August, which feels like it was forever ago. Um, and the way that we want to do this process is provide honorariums for three finalists. So all in all, um, we received quite a few um, proposals, selected the top three in September, um, gave them some time to send us completed designs, and then selected our winning proposal at the end of October. Uh, and right now we're anticipating to install the artwork um, probably in early January 2021. We had a committee that represented a broad um, breadth of stakeholders, including the City of Asheville's Capital Projects Department, um, Walter and Austin, who have been the leads on the renovation. Myself, um, two representatives from RATP Dev, which if you're not familiar with um, the transit agency, we have a contractor that runs operations. So Barry is our general manager and Jason is one of the customer service representatives working where the art will be installed, um, as well as two members, Jazz and Constance from the Public Art and Cultural Commission. So thank you. And then Carmen Ibarra um, from Just Economics who also leads Better Buses Together, which is a rider advocacy group that we work pretty closely with. So the scope of work is that it's a 2D artwork to be printed on vinyl or contour cut, to be installed in the art station's passenger waiting area and dispatch office, so where folks um, buy their tickets and ask questions. And what we wanted is the artist's reflection of what art in transit meant. Um, 
in January 2020, we underwent a huge service change, um, improved the schedules, made it a little bit easier for folks to use the system. So the transit system has really been in transit, not only with this renovation, but also with our service changes. Um, so those three finalists got $500 honorariums for their effort to provide us a really quality proposal. And then the artist um, who was selected for the final design uh, was awarded or will be awarded $5,000. And here are some photos of the installation space. Um, so here is the main uh, canvas, if you will, for the public art piece. And this is probably what's gonna be seen most prominently. And then the second companion piece goes behind the ticket office. So folks can kind of see that pop out um, when they're talking to customer service representatives. So the response, um, five individual artists responded um, and we received 10 proposals. Uh, one artist submitted quite a few which was wonderful. Um, we have three finalists, Joseph Pearson from Asheville, North Carolina, Wyatt Grant also from Asheville, and then Eric Vincent Allen from Cliffwood, New Jersey. And here is the selected final design by Wyatt Grant. Um, so I'll start with this main piece that'll be in the waiting area. Wyatt has moved to Asheville somewhat recently, um, but has gotten really involved in the community. And he wanted to reflect all the different space, spaces in Asheville, especially that could be accessed um, via transit. So the committee really liked that it reflected all of the different aspects of Asheville while using transit is the cohesive piece that brings them all together. Um, and then the companion piece includes a variety of people. And it, in his artist statement, I think what was really appreciated is that these are people that Wyatt had met while he was in Asheville. So it's not just these made up people. Um, it's folks that are in the community that he's interacted with. Um, so that was really great. And our next Steps. Um, so we have met with the artist to discuss some of the committee feedback, um, and he's currently doing a couple of small revisions, and those are anticipated the next couple of weeks. And like I said earlier, we expect that it'll be installed at the transit station in early January 2021. So when that's all said and done, I encourage you all to ride the bus and take a look. And I think that's all I've got. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So our next um, percent for art report is an update from Walter Ear, uh, building construction program manager about the historic elevator project. We have Walter. Uh, I am here, but I was not prepared to, I'm sorry, I uh, was not prepared to do a uh, presentation on the elevators. Um, I can uh, meet to do that next time, I apologize. Uh, I was uh, thought I was sitting in to, to support uh, my colleagues at the, the, for the art station, so I can, I'd be happy to, uh, to <laughs> present that to you next meeting, I apologize. Sure, thank you, Walter. So, um, this is Steph. I just want to um, add that Walter's project, um, and I'm sorry, Walter, if there was this misunderstanding, but uh, the historic elevators in, in the city uh, hall building are going to be replaced. And so, it's actually quite a significant cost. And that is why that project um, is going to end up requiring a public art piece. And there's what I wanted to mention at the, the top of this was because of the pandemic and us um, not meeting with boards and commissions, staff has gone ahead with smaller projects um, like Art in Transit and like Walter's project and allowed for some flexibility in creating the scope. And we, our intention has been to make sure that you all are involved in the artist selection process. So hence, 
you've been involved in the RAD project and um, uh, Constance and um, Jazz were involved in the transit project. So um, Walter's project is underway, but earlier, at a much earlier stage than our in transit. And then the, the next project we're talking about is even earlier than that. Awesome. So, um, well, without further ado, we will move forward. Um, so Santa Horton will give us an update on the Jake Rusher Playful Art Project. Thanks, Katie. Um, thanks, everyone. So um, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to work with you all on this and um, fill you in on where we're heading with the Jake Rusher Project. So together, the Parks and Recreation and Capital Projects with the input from the PAC, um, we're seeking qualified regional artists for consideration in creating a public art installation at the, the newly renovated slash under construction um, Jake Rusher Park in South Asheville. Um, this installation is intended to be played upon and so it should be playful and interactive as well as thought, thoughtfully integrated into the site. Um, with respect to both new elements, uh, there's a picnic pavilion going in and, and sports sports um, as well as existing site elements. Um, there's a, a playground that will remain. Um, so, so a part of that, um, some of the, the playground equipment is um, older and so we, we're removing that and the thought is to take the percent for art um, funding together with um, um, additional funding that we would use for playground equipment replacement and um, have a, a public art piece that is um, that, that encourages play. Um, so um, we're asking you all to uh, think about who would be good representatives on the review committee um, for this. Um, we will have, we will potentially shortlist up to three artists and then do, a, a, you know, have them come for a site visit since it's definitely, um, it's a, integration into the site is a really important piece of this. And then um, obviously the, the PAC um, have, have you all um, make the final recommendation once the review committee um, does that. So our timeline, we hope to release um, the call shortly and um, look, we're looking to get some medals back in middle of January and um, you know, make recommendations to shortlist um, end of January, early February, and then again, um, make the final selection um, at, you know, late February for, you know, for uh, spring um, design, um, summer, hopefully summer installation. So that is, that is our planned timeline for this and, and knowing that things often change. Um, so with that, um, are there any questions? Happy to answer. If we have recommendations, should we submit those to you, Steph, and you'll pass them along or send them straight to you, Susanna? For the um, the person that would serve on the selection committee, you mean? I yeah. think actually maybe if you could collect people who are interested okay. and then, then as chair choose who would serve on that committee, that might be helpful for staff. So are you just asking for recommendations from PAC or do you want other recommendations? So the, our review committee will be made up of staff, um, PAC uh, committee members, and we we have community representatives. So um, Already. a neighbor who's, who they live right across from the park, um, they have expressed interest. So, you know, with, with the capital project, we did neighborhood outreach. So we know the the um, folks who are interested and, and invested in um, see, being a part of this, so. Perfect, so PAC members, if you're interested on serving on this selection committee, let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much, it's very exciting. Some public art in South Asheville. We're excited um, too, yeah. thanks Katie. Thank you. So we will now move on to hear several updates on recent public art projects from our staff liaisons, Steph Monson-Bell. 
Okay, thanks everybody. Um, and we're gonna make this section interactive, I think a little bit right off the bat. So let's talk about the Vance Monument Task Force. Um, as you know, the Vance Monument is a piece of the city's public art collection. Uh, it has been looked at for many weeks by a talented group of, of folks after the city and county passed a joint resolution to look at whether that monument should be um, removed, altered, replaced, kept as is. Um, hopefully, you've been watching some of those meetings. They have occurred um, every Thursday and about a week and a half ago, that group did um, a vote to recommend to uh, city council and the county commission that it be removed. So I wanted everyone to know that that vote and that recommendation is going to city council next Tuesday. I did see councilwoman Smith pop on here. If she wishes to speak, she could just unmute and, and interrupt. That would be great. Um, and it's going to the county commission, I believe the night before. I can't speak for what is in the report, but I can let you know that the reports that go to city council are always posted the Friday before the meeting. So by this Friday afternoon um, uh, on the city's uh, website, the city council website, I'm sure there'll be some kind of perhaps PowerPoint or a report that outlines um, maybe some more specific recommendations, or it may just be that that simple. So that is coming down the pipe. And then Katie might want to talk about um, the conversation that they had with the chair of the Vance Monument Task Force. As you all know, we provided support to the Vance Monument Task Force. Um, three of our committee members, Andrew Fletcher, Valeria Watson, and myself, met with the co-chairs just to provide um, support and, and explanation um, that this is a piece of public art and um, uh, a little bit more about how the Public Art Cultural Commission works and how we can support the efforts of the Vance Monument Task Force. Um, so we ended up uh, creating a one-pager that was then shared with the task force just to give them some background information as far as public art goes. Anything you want to add, Valeria? Well, I'm never quite sure if, uh, if we've gotten to this place where we can talk about if it's moved, where to? Because there seem to be no solutions. And I know there's the Vance Cemetery and the Vance uh, property out there. So, but maybe that's, I'm, I'm a little ahead of ourselves. I don't know. I'll just know as staff that um, removal was one of the options that they, um, and so was um, moving it to another place. And my understanding is that they're saying, don't move it anywhere else, get, um, remove it. And that there's a difference. So I'll let you know, um, I'll update you all on what specifics the group is recommending. Okay. Um, so we'll move on from Vance Monument Task Force. Just a quick update on Wake, which of course is down on Collier Ave in the South Slope. Uh, it had been extended um, during the um, summer time. Its stay at uh, Collier Ave is through March at least for now. Just as a reminder, um, you guys uh, took a look and spoke with um, the folks at the Community Foundation and Melchin, the artist. Um, uh, earlier before this project was installed, and it is a partnership between the Community Foundation, many of their donors, City of Asheville, and uh, UNCA, whose theme studio is really highly responsible for working with Mr. Chin um, to get that project on the ground. So it's still there and available for folks to see, and maybe today someone got a picture of a little snow on it. Uh, urban Trail Maintenance. We are currently um, ordering two plaques. One of them is new for the Haywood Streetscape project, which has recently been completed. And that is to frame the Shopping Days Urban Trail Monument that was outside of Malapops for many years, the home of like a great busking spot, and now is moved across the street to a space that has, uh, to a place that has a little more space actually. So there'll be a new marker installed there that celebrates the contributions of the Jewish community to um, greater the greater Asheville area, but especially downtown um, 
and that should be going in in the next couple of months. Also this summer, we completed the renovation of Grove's Vision, uh, the marker that was removed to uh, because of the construction of the Cambria Hotel several years ago. So it is finally back in. Um, a cool new piece of it is that the lighting um, is powered by a solar panel, which you kind of don't even notice that much as you're walking by. It just looks like more urban uh, street furniture. Uh, so that is now completely off of the grid, but that is up. And our next project with the urban trail um, includes the replacement of the cat. Thank you, Constance, for all the work that you put on that. We had a site visit by the folks that actually um, uh, uh, created, used the mold that Constance provided and created the new bronze cat about two weeks ago. They came up to determine how they were going to install it on the light post, uh, which is steel, um, on Wall Street and how they're going to make sure that maybe it would be a little harder this time for someone to take off. So we'll be hearing soon. And that is that's coming up lickety split. And then the last piece is that we're starting um, pre-planning for the replacement of uh, Art Deco Masterpiece, which is sometimes better known as the S&W marker. It's the uh, Italian uh, mosaic, tile mosaic piece that has been in the ground. It's been on the wall and now we've got to make a setting for it and get it out on the sidewalk for people to see. So uh, that Urban Trail Committee will be taking a look at that this year. That will probably be the big push Although there's many other sub initiatives um, and uh, with that, that maybe we'll mention in com coming months. Uh, Haywood Page concept plan adoption. So last month, uh, city council, month and a half ago, city council adopted the Haywood and Page concept plan, which is the plan to um, develop the city's property and also some other uh, potential property that the Basilica and National Church residences own that connects all of the space in between the Grove Arcade and the Vanderbilt Battery Park, the library, all the shops on Haywood Street, the Basilica. I um, uh, uh, wanted to thank uh, all the folks from here that participated in that project and made it very, very special. Andrew's not here, but him especially played a large role for many years in the creation of that. And the plan does include two spaces for public art. One is the urban trail marker that will be redone and redesigned uh, when that uh, park and new building are created. And that is Guastavino's monument. Uh, for the Basilica. And then there's another space on the northwest corner that is preserved for a site being tentatively called the, the Beacon, which is a, a place, a, a marker that would be of significant um, probably height and uh, visual stature to draw people into the uh, public space itself and perhaps draw them into uh, the actual small contemplative room that's planned for that part of the site that allows people to think about the significance of that land and the people that came before them, especially the Native American peoples and the contributions that they have um, provided over time to this community. So that was adopted and there are no implementation plans of yet. We plan to go to city council in the spring to, um, ask them uh, about their preferences for implementation, including timelines. Wanted to note that city council in the next couple months, uh, probably January or February, will be uh, looking at um, new hotel regulations. So you've probably heard about uh, the hotel moratorium a lot in the last year or so, and hopefully know that uh, council has asked uh, to th that staff come up with different ways through community engagement, also looking at best practices uh, to um, look at hotels and hotel development differently. The ordinance includes the potential for hotel developers to be able to develop by right without going to city council, certain size hotels in certain areas, as long as they meet a pretty complex table of public benefits. And in that table of public benefits, one of the benefits that um, they can choose from, and they need to choose from multiple, are contributions to the public art fund. So right now, a developer would uh, donate to the city $300 a room per room per key 
uh, to the Public Art Fund to basically uh, get that box checked and create some of those points. So that was actually on the planning and zoning agenda. Some of you may have seen that um, for tomorrow, but I just wanted to let you know that it has now been taken off the agenda to give people more time to um, review and consider the recommendations. So process has slowed down a little bit. And the last thing I just wanted to know is that the city continues with Asheville Share Space, which is the name of our public space initiative during um, COVID for COVID recovery. This includes shared streets, includes parklets, includes what we're now calling streeteries, which is places where people can eat outside. Um, it includes expansions into private areas and winterization, um, easy paths for us to help people with winterization so that they can do COVID safe business during this time. And um, uh, I think uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm here for you. Or if, if any of you, like I said, wanted to add, because I know many of you have been involved in these projects, if any of you wanted to add additional information. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to share? I'd just like to thank the city for all that you've done around public spaces during this time. It's been very helpful to a lot of businesses and it's much appreciated. So the next item on our agenda is report on public comment. And um, just want to let you know that we had one public comment, which I will be sharing with commission members for us to determine if we would like to add to a future agenda. So the next item is adjournment. Um, so I will now adjourn the meeting unless there are any objections. So adjourned. <laughs>